Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! Ah, the alt-right. The new boogeyman to further the progressive agenda has been born, and the mainstream media have been given a nice, simple, neat package to sell. Look at the racist bigots! The alt-right is united in rejecting the current dogma that all races are equal. I think we should say that no, we are the real racists. <laughs> because we have to be honest about this, everyone else is. I mean, it's very simple. Some gave Nazi-style salutes. And at a restaurant, troubled reality TV star Tila Tequila gave the Nazi salute with these knuckleheads. She even tweeted, Sieg Heil, hell victory. But she misspelled Sieg. Hey, nobody said she was smart. Wow, okay, like, look, look how this just beams right into me. Like, literally, the sunlight is right on me because I am the goddess on Earth. Um, and I'm just beautiful. Ah, you can hear like the angel music ascending into heaven while I'm here. Um, I just wanted to show you guys more proof that I am what I say I am, which is a goddess, an angel on earth. Um, cause you know, I'm very magical when I'm around, like shit like this happens to me all the time. Like when I say I like change the weather, I can literally like change the weather. Like I can make it rain, storm, like whatever. Um, I can make it flood because like I was one of the beings that made the earth flood a long time ago, but like whatever. B-T-H-O-H, hate, that's, what does that mean? That stands for beat the hell out of hate. Oh, that's very nice. I and you look what... so boring and bourgeois, yet you're gonna beat the hell out of me, really? No, I... What, what are you waiting for? <laughs> that's... You're, wa you're wearing this t-shirt, sir. Well, I'm, I'm right here, why don't you come beat me up? I was intending to ask a civil question, sir. Why are you wearing a violent t-shirt that says you're going to beat, beat to the hell out of... Spend a little time at A&M and you'll figure out what this means. Oh, effectively, uh, effectively it means nothing. Because you, I can, and I, I, I've, I, I knew you when I saw you first coming in. I've seen millions of people like you. You are a white coward. You wear some little t-shirt, beat the hell out of hate, yeah. You're not even willing to do that. That t-shirt is total bullshit. You're not even willing to go to the gym. Look how fat you are. You, you're, you can't beat the hell out of anything, sir. Seriously. I, I hope, I hope I, you know, I have to say, I have, people say I am based on hate. I hope this I want is to be getting honest. on tape. I have utter this contempt. Is, this is free speech, everybody. I have utter contempt for losers like you, sir. You wear a violent t-shirt. You're not even willing to actually do anything. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Now, if you're shocked, you're not part of the alt-right. Not yet. But just wait. We're growing all the time. So there you have it, folks. The alternative right. Hitler-loving Nazi scum and Asian freak shows. That's the whole thing. We can just end the video right here. You know, I don't blame you if that's the impression you have of the movement. But it simply isn't true that that's everything they have to offer. Nazism or National Socialism and white supremacy really isn't what the alt-right is about. I know, Rachel Maddow has been working hard to get everyone thinking this is the case. So if you poke around on the website of the white supremacist... Uh white nationalist uh, think tank. Yeah, you can kind of see how they're trying to update the whole racist image. This, for example, is their post on Holocaust Remembrance Day this, this year, this, this past January. They call it Holocaust Amnesia Day. And under a picture of a pile of dead bodies from the Holocaust, it says, I can't believe that it's crept up on me again. Today, I discover that today is Holocaust Memorial Day, and I'm fresh out of onions. So this is the real deal, right? This is alternative right. This, this frog, they've taken over, started as an anodyne thing. They've taken it over as a deliberate white supremacist symbol. There's the, there's the frog. So it's like Donald Trump and his crew, Donald Trump and his team, we've got your back. The white supremacists, we got your back, Donald Trump. We're right here behind you, standing over your shoulder. It's creepy, right? What is Donald Trump Jr. doing posting the neo-Nazi frog thing? Let's not call them the alt-right. They're white supremacists. I mean, the fact of the matter is, the alt-right is just their way of rebranding. Enough's enough. They're white supremacists, and we need to recognize them for that. I feel you on that, b in, in, because... And the rest of the fake news media have been echoing her sentiments. You know, people call it an alt-right group. These were Nazis, neo-Nazis, with Nazi salutes denouncing Jews and minorities. They're unabashed white supremacists, racists, anti-Semites. I mean, they, they stick by those views. Richard Spencer, he's the man who actually coined that term alt-right. He was in Washington this weekend. He was spewing, as he often 
president uh, does, I mean, what I can only describe as hate-filled garbage uh, of Jews, Spencer said, and we'll put this quote up on screen, one wonders if these people are people at all or instead soulless golem. Wrong. Well, he made comments about Jews questioning whether Jews are in fact people. That's not all right. That's, you know, that's just flat out anti-Semitic and Nazi propaganda. Near everything you hear about the alt-right is either a misrepresentation, an oversimplification, or an outright lie. Even YouTubers who you'd expect to get this right, who you'd think would try to be fair and balanced, given if you're not, people will tear you a new one in the comments, but even YouTubers have been getting this wrong. Naked Ape, for example, claimed the alt-right was just a meme. He said the phrase alternative right is meaningless. I'm not sure if he's deliberately ignoring the intellectual core of the movement, or if he's just underplaying it for political purposes, but it's just not true that the alt-right has no ideology. And Romy Millennial, she did quite a good video giving a list of some of their beliefs, but she only spent around 10 seconds explaining why the alt-right exists, which in my opinion is completely the wrong way around. I mean, the alt-right was birthed from the neo-reactionary movement, so knowing where they come from is key to understanding it. And Romy Millennial just didn't address this at all. The alt-right is a direct response and sort of reactionary movement to the current of anti-white, anti-male, anti-Western propaganda that we've seen coming out of social justice activism more and more. This completely misses the point. I mean, everybody knows that progressives and faux liberals have an anti-white agenda. Recently, we've seen a college professor come out in support of mass suicide for whites because slavery. Lena Dunham recently posted this to Twitter. How are you feeling about the extinction of white men? White men are a problem. Straight white men are a big problem. That's for sure. But I actually feel pretty good about it. I think uh, straight white guys have been screwing things up for long enough. High time for straight white males to uh, step back and let some other people do it. That's my dad. <laughs> oh, I hate Lena Dunham. She's such a fat, disgusting, libtarded cunt. Anyway, we also had the disgusting recent kidnap and torture of a mentally challenged white kid, an act of hatred undoubtedly motivated by progressive rhetoric. Leftists basically believe whites are responsible for everything evil that's ever happened in history ever. And they love their less white people quotas. Oops, I mean diversity quotas. And their multiculturalism, which is basically less white culture. Now, of course, the alt-right resists this, and they put forward arguments that counter this narrative. But so do the whole skeptic community. So do loads of liberals. It's hardly exclusive to the alt-right. And as far as they're concerned, these people, these leftists spouting anti-white bigotry, they're actually a pretty useful recruiting tool. The alt-right want white people to sign up, and the left have given up on appealing to the white vote. Well, they have the support of white millennials, who thankfully never bother to vote, and gross, overweight, insecure, whiny white women, but essentially it's that minority vote, that PC crowd, the oppressed. That's the money shot. That's who they want. We don't need white people leading the Democratic Party right now. The Democratic Party is diverse, and it should be reflected as so in our leadership and throughout the, the staff at the, top, at the highest levels, from the vice chairs to the secretaries, all the way down to the people working in the offices. This just isn't in competition with the alternative right at all. Thanks for pushing more people into my camp, they think, and they move on with their day. A lot of people have talked about how the Democrats are kind of in the wilderness now. They don't really have an identity. There's a minority of them that have admitted and they've conceded the fact that they abandoned the white working class. And much like the Labour Party in England, I mean, do you think they'll reform their identity? Do you think they'll try and bridge back to whites? I don't know if there's enough of them to do that who want to. And do you have any ideas what their re reformation might look like? I don't care what they do. <laughs> The rampant, anti-Western, anti-all-things-white, foaming-mouthed, spotty teenagers and fat maroon women have become, unwittingly, an asset for the alternative right. They're useful idiots. So enough about these lefty cumbags. What is the alt-right actually about? Where do they really come from? What is this reactionary movement reacting to? If I can answer that, if I can neatly explain the origins, I reckon you guys will have a pretty decent idea of what it's all about. So, ladies and gentlemen, I give you... Exhibit one. There are reports that there is no evidence of a direct link between Baghdad and some of these terrorist organizations. There are known knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown 
unknowns. The ones we don't know, we don't know. <laughs> Excuse me, but is this an unknown unknown? Uh, I'm not several unknowns, and I'm, I'm just wondering I'm not this going, is an unknown. I'm not going to say which it is. This phrase "cuckservative" originally comes out of the U.S., a pejorative aimed at mainstream conservatives and Republicans. But the scourge of cuckservatism is, unfortunately, the norm in the U.K. too. When people make fun of Christianity in this country, it rightly turns the other cheek. When a young gymnast, Lewis Smith, makes fun of another religion widely practiced in this country. He is hounded on Twitter by the media and suspended by his association. I suppose I should back up for a second and give you some quick context before continuing. So this is Lewis Smith, British Olympian and basically all round good guy who got in trouble. And by trouble I mean he was sent death threats, he had the entire mainstream media condemn him and he was suspended from the British gymnastics team for two months when this video got leaked to the Sun newspaper. Come on, come on, <laughs> Six o'clock days. Did you catch that, folks? That's a hate crime. What were you thinking, basically? I'm very sorry for what I've done. You know, and it's just, it's just so hard. I mean, we're not here to attack you, but what I will say, which I find quite disturbing about the video and just a bit strange, is you are mixed race, you're a person of colour yourself. Oh yeah, she feels so good about herself. Call him a racist, call him an Islamophobe, tell him he hates Muslims. Do it! So I know you've experienced racism yourself at some point. Yeah, I sure. have, and I know that you have. And you know it's one of the most painful things you can go through. So I just find it bizarre. At what point would you think it was okay to do that? Even if your friend pulled the mat off. Well, I think, I think it's important to know who that... who understands it... What I did wasn't racist. <laughs> For goodness sake, Mr. Speaker, this man received death threats and we have all looked the other way. So my question to the Prime Minister is this, what is going on in this country? Because I no longer understand the rules. Yeah. Did you notice that? A Member of Parliament stands up for the rights of citizens to exercise their freedom of speech and it's near silence in the House. They're so afraid, so observant to political correctness that they can't even bring themselves to stand up for the rights of their constituents. But it gets worse. I give you the so-called Conservative leader of the Tory party and British Prime Minister, Theresa May. I understand the level of concern that my honourable friend has raised in relation to this matter. This is a balance that we need to, that we need to find. We value freedom of expression and freedom of speech in this country. That is absolutely essential uh, in underpinning our democracy. But we also value tolerance uh, to others. We also value tolerance in relation to religions. This is one of the issues that I, we've looked at in the counter-extremism strategy that the government has produced. I think we need to ensure that, yes, it is right that people can have that freedom of expression, but in doing so, that right has a responsibility too, and that is a responsibility to recognise the importance of tolerance to others. This is the essence of cuckservatism. She should be sticking up for a citizen's rights to free speech, to criticise religion. She should be condemning the Islamists who sent him death threats. She should openly oppose Islam, a foreign ideology that's caused so many problems in our country. The onus should be put on Muslims to, I don't know, maybe not want to kill people who make a joke about their religion. But instead she bows down to the PC narrative. She panders to the left. She panders to minority groups. She panders to those who probably won't even vote for her. This type of rhetoric about tolerance appeals to university students, cultural relativists, feminists, 
fat, unattractive people on the doll, and so on, i.e. not her base. But you can't stand up for your own people, couldn't possibly do that. I mean, darling, why someone might call me a racist. That could really hurt me in the polls. That could hurt my career. And so she cowardly placates these people with a couple of buzzwords. Say tolerance is a core British value. Say diversity is our strength. Say we're stronger together. Choose your poison. You might wonder, what is this woman willing to stand up for? Is there anything she'll defend? Misty Blackman! Oh. 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 Mr. Mr. Speaker, Aberdeen Cyrenians um, have launched a financial appeal because of the increasing numbers of people finding themselves homeless as a direct result of the UK government's pursuit of austerity. Yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, how can the Prime Minister sleep in her warm bed at night knowing her government's policies have consigned people to a cold Christmas? Yeah. The government is taking action in a variety of ways to address the issue of homelessness. Of course, one of the key things we need to do is ensure that we do see more homes being built in this country. But I just say this to the Honourable Lady. She talks about austerity in the sort of tone that she refers to it. Actually, austerity is about us living within our means. And we should, and we should, and we should always remember we should always remember when we're talking about government providing support for individuals that taxpayers have to pay for that support and many taxpayers are themselves struggling to get by. That's it. Limited government, low taxation. She's happy to enter a debate about government spending or about how some road should be financed or what the minimum wage should be. You know, really important stuff, folks. But when a citizen receives death threats from radical Muslims, she tells us to be tolerant. Theresa May doesn't stand up for anything. And that's the problem with modern day mainstream conservatism. It's not an ideology. It has no core principles beyond not spending too much. I appreciate the importance of economics, but don't we want our leaders to have a backbone? When Cameron resigned, I read an article about the secret to his success. No one knew what he believed. The man never once stood up for anything. And I know some will disagree and say, but he said he wasn't a feminist. He said multiculturalism has failed. Come on, give the guy some credit. Really? Let's get this clear. Are you a feminist? Well, when I was asked that question, I think what I should have said is, if that means an equalist, if it means equal no, rights no, for no, women, fem yes. Feminist. Well, well I mean, we're all under, if you mean... Do you believe in women's rights? Yes, to be, yes, yes, yes. I mean, the short answer is, if feminism so is about equal rights for women, Can you say yes. it? I am a feminist. If that's what you mean by feminist, yes, I'm a feminist. Well, woohoo, really slammed feminism there, didn't he? Because, yeah, men and women, we're just the same. Gender's a social construct. We really want women working, don't we? It's super important for us traditionally minded conservatives who put an emphasis on family and community that women have a chance to work overtime selling corporate insurance, making babies, propagating the species, working with other mothers to build communities, raising the next generation to continue to build on the work of our forefathers, ensuring the survival of our species and culture. Eh, fuck that. I want them working in sewers. Yeah, David Cameron, really standing up for conservative principles, really sticking it to the fem because all conservatives agree that women need the freedom to die on construction sites. That's what we want. And as for Cameron standing up against multiculturalism, for fuck's sake, the guy imported more immigrants to Britain than any other prime minister in British history. As Vox Day aptly put it, these conservatives conserve Nothing. The Union Jack is banned to avoid offending Muslims. Our national heritage, things like British memorabilia and Morris dancing, are deemed racist. Working class towns like Luton and Bradford are completely divided. Muslim grooming gangs operate with impunity. Even our prison guards allow jihadists to openly recruit in our prisons. God forbid we stop them from preaching nutty Islamic hatred of the West. That wouldn't be tolerance. And as our culture crumbles, our so-called conservative leaders say they're basically feminists, they're undoubtedly globalists, and they remind us to not criticize Islam as they import record numbers of Muslims. These people are spineless. Time and again, they choose the least offensive, most politically expedient position because they care more for their careers than they do for the country. As David Starkey put it, they have mastered the art of saying rather nice things that rather a lot of people agree with. And sadly, this attitude, this inability to speak the truth and to stand up for one's own people, 
It's endemic across the Western political landscape. Ich auch. Ist doch hübsch. Enjoy difference, start tolerance. Det finns ingen väg tillbaka. Sverige blir aldrig som det varit. Europa är i förändring och Sverige behövs som en trygg plats för människor på flykt. Det är dags att inse att nya svenskar kommer att ta plats. Det är inte bara nya svenskar som ska integreras. Alla behöver integreras, även etablerade svenskar. Turpignattara, periferia sud di Roma. Qui è terra di immigrati, soprattutto bengalesi. Ci sono tre moschee, ma sono troppo piccoli e i musulmani pregano per strada. Non ci stanno gli italiani, non ci sta più niente. Io mi metto paura uscire. We are, we are not having war. We are the victims, we are not them. We have to live like we used before. I want to go to work, I can. My children want to go to school, they can. We have to live our life, they took it for us. This book is about the larger forces at play in the developed world that have left Europe too enfeebled to resist its remorseless transformation into Eurabia. Uh, Germany, uh, Japan and Italy are already in net population decline. They have upside down family trees. They have four grandparents uh, with two children and one grandchild. Uh, that doesn't have to go on for a long time until you're in serious trouble and you reach a point uh, beyond which you can't uh, recover. And that's what a lot of European countries are at now. In effect, Western Europe imported a large Muslim population uh, to be the children it couldn't be bothered having themselves. And the Muslim birth rate is? Compared to the average uh, ethnic European birth rate where they have 1.3 children per couple, the, uh, the, Muslim, uh, the estimated Muslim population is 3.5. Now the official British statistic from the official British government statistics office says that the Muslim population of the United Kingdom is growing 10 times faster than the general population. Uh, that doesn't have to go on long uh, for the numbers to even out. If you say have a, I mean people think it takes a long time, but if you say have a 90% uh, population uh, that's, let's not, let's not make it any kind of racial thing, let's call them the munchkins, say, 90% munchkins uh, and they have 1.3 uh, children per couple and then you have a 10% ethnic minority, you can call them call them the Ruritanians, call them whatever you want, but they have 3.5 children. That 90% and that 10% will have uh, roughly the same number of grandchildren. So in other words, in two, two generations is all you it's need even. and you've caught up. Britain is currently 87% white. In two generations, white ethnic Brits will be the minority. The voting majority will be Muslim, electing Muslim representatives. To me, this denotes the death of my country, the death of my culture, the death of the values that British people currently hold. But those in the alternative right would describe it differently. This is white genocide. Not only are Muslim communities, but African communities, Asian communities, Hispanic communities, and, and the wave still continues. It's not gonna stop, nor should we want it to stop. It's one of the things I think we can be most proud of. So there's a second thing in that black box, an unrelenting stream of immigration, nonstop, nonstop. Folks like me who were Caucasian of European descent for the first time in 2017 will be in an absolute minority in the United States of America, absolute minority. Fewer than 50% of the people in America from then and on will be white European stock. That's not a bad thing. That's a, that's a source of our strength. Side note, how creepy is Joe Biden? He's gross. Anyway, the case for this can perhaps be best argued when we look at the demographic changes in the United States, the birthplace of the alternative rights. The white population is in decline and whites are becoming a minority. Now yes, whites have had a sub-replacement fertility rate since the 70s. White women have an average of 1.6 children and each child generation is 75% the size of the parent's generation, denoting a steady population contraction but not a collapse. Whites will do just fine making this many babies, a reduction such as 
because this isn't a problem. So why are whites becoming a minority? This is down to immigration policy. America used to have this quota system called the National Origins Formula that ensured immigration could not change the ethnic distribution of the population. But that was scrapped in 1965 when the Immigration Act was passed. The national origins of an immigrant were no longer considered, and America went from 88% white in 1960 to 72% today, a 16% decrease, which doesn't sound too alarming, right? But if we add in the illegals, oh, sorry, undocumented migrants, then the white population today stands at just 65%, a decrease of 23%, almost a quarter in 50 years. That doesn't mean we actually have less white people. It means whites are becoming a minority in terms of their percentage of the US population. Of course, the left celebrate this, they fucking hate whites. But what really aggravates the alt-righters is that the Republicans have refused to touch this issue. Before Trump, near no one mentioned immigration in a negative light. It just didn't happen. And this has been the case since the 80s. With, as we have kind of made illegal some kinds of labor that I'd like to see legal, we're doing two things. We're creating a whole society of really honorable, decent, family-loving people that are in violation of the law. And secondly, we're exacerbating relations with Mexico. I think the time has come that the United States and our neighbors, particularly our neighbor to the South, should have a better understanding and a better relationship than we've ever had. Why don't we work out some recognition of our mutual problems, make it possible for them to come here legally with a work permit, and then while they're working and earning here, they pay taxes here. And when they go on to go back, they can go back and they can cross and open the border both ways by understanding their problems. This is the only safety valve right now they have with that unemployment that probably keeps the lid from blowing off down there. And I think we could have a, friend, a fine relationship and it would solve the problem you mentioned also. Let's address ourselves to the fundamentals. These are good people, strong people. Part of my family is a Mexican. So, a party which is supported by an almost exclusively white base is pro-mass immigration and refuses to fight for policies that would stop the white population declining. And they still aren't. Trump is only talking about illegal immigration and, as far as we know, has no intention to scrap the 1965 Immigration Act. The decline in the white population is set to continue and thus their political and cultural dominance is set for further decline. Now you might think that doesn't matter because anyone can become an American, right? Anyone can buy into the principles laid out in the Constitution. Anyone from anywhere can join this melting pot and the country will prevail regardless. Quotas to prevent the ethnic makeup of the country from changing are just racist anyway, bruh. But it was Europeans who built America and this is something so few seem to recognize. The Brits and the Dutch founded the nation in 1776. The legal system, the political system, the national language, the shared common values of the people and their culture, everything was European. I know, Native Americans were there first, I know there were black slaves, but this country, the country that was founded in Philadelphia on July 4th, 1776, that nation was governed and occupied by white Europeans for generations. But it's a nation of immigrants, you hear people say. How dare you call the greatest melting pot on earth white? Well again, sorry, but if we're dealing with facts, then pre-1965, before the Immigration Act was passed, the country was white. In 1930, it was 90% white, and nearly all immigrants entering the United States from 1776 to 1965 came from Europe. This nation of immigrants rhetoric is a misrepresentation of history. It says the whole world took part in building America. Complete nonsense. It also ignores that before 1965, immigration to America was very measured. Strict quotas were put on Asians, blacks weren't allowed to enter the country, and Mexican immigration was heavily limited. And there were long periods when almost no one entered the country at all. This is what Peter Brimelow, a much admired figure in the alt-right, describes as great lulls. So from 1776 to the early 1840s, 65 years, the US received almost zero newcomers. That's almost 60 years of assimilation and becoming a cohesive society, a period in which three generations of Americans were born. Then immigration picked up from the mid 1840s up to 1921, and then the second great lull happened. From 1921 to 1965, 44 years, again, near zero immigration. It should also go without saying, but a lot of people have been born in America from 1776 to present day. None of these people are immigrants. 
with the exception of some black African slaves and some East Asians who made up a tiny percentage of total newcomers, everyone entering the US came from Europe. And it was these Europeans who settled, began to build, had children who continued their work, and so on and so forth. This is how America became what it is, until 1965, when that political decision was made and the country began to be flooded with immigrants from the third world and developing countries. And since then, the white European population has been in decline. To the alt-right, they see this as a betrayal of those ancestors who built America for their descendants. Did they envision anyone being welcome to indulge in the fruits of their labor? Surely they took such great risks, fought in wars, and overcame hardships for the future of their people. Or did they do it all so it could be given away to foreigners? The latter seems highly doubtful. And this demographic change begs some more questions. What happens if you replace the white European population with a new population comprised entirely of people from developing or third world countries? What happens if the people who wrote the laws and built the country and communicated the culture from generation to generation cease to be a majority? Which culture will reign? Who shall govern? Which interests will be pandered to come election time? Will there be a place for the people who built America in America? American culture, after all, is an amalgamation and an evolution of European cultures. When this is no longer the predominant culture, when white Europeans become a minority, will America even exist? My son cut his dick off last year, and now he's on hormone replacement therapy. He's suicidal and has threatened to kill his mother on several occasions, but we're being understanding of this change. We have to call him Corey. He goes to strange nightclubs, spends his days online blogging. Ah, I think he might shoot up a black church or something. Maybe rape an Asian, I don't know. He's losing it, but we're super supportive. We're just removing all the norms that the human species has relied upon for thousands of years because now we recognize how oppressive these things can be. That's what the staff at the school said, said to be open-minded. My eldest says he's gone M-G-T-O-W, whatever the fuck that means. Says a life of loneliness and a rejection of family and community is the only choice men have left. And my daughter says she's the feminist, says the patriarchy must be destroyed, says I'm an oppressive person, and uh, I agree. I mean, I wasn't thrilled when she told me she was a polyamorous gender something something. I think it means lesbian. But she's already killed four of her babies, so uh, I'm confused. It doesn't matter, I suppose. It's just a social construct. Everything's just a social construct. I'm trying to be understanding, I'm trying. It's just when I think that we'll never have grandchildren. My wife cries all the time and I find myself staring into the abyss wondering what life is about, if there's any meaning to all this. We never make love anymore. The counselor suggested bringing another guy, you know, to the bedroom. I was supposed to watch, it was supposed to get me off, but since then, I started cutting. You have to let the pain out. At least I got my nine to five steady job, more like 4 a.m. to 10 when you include the commute and the overtime. But I got my health insurance, I got my Nissan Micra parked out front. Oh yeah, living life to pay off the mortgage. I'm dead on the inside. What difference does it make? What difference does it make? What difference does it make? What does it make? What difference 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 does it make? Because apathy is the number one problem here. Apathy is the cause and the effect of the nihilism. The number one problem in the West today is that people have something like the following attitude. Nothing really matters. It's all about me. And I should suit myself and not think about the future beyond my death 
or the past beyond my birth. I don't care if my group ceases to exist. I don't care about what I leave for my descendants, because I don't appreciate the fact that what I have came from my ancestors. Genetics and ancestry may connect them and me, but time and the assurance of the Jewish media separate them and me. In fact, I revel in feeling no connection to my ancestors at all, and in not caring whether my descendants are even born. It's all about me. So there you go, that's what they think of society. Pretty negative, pretty anti-modernity, pro-traditionalism. Good lads, you know, firmly first. And this brings me to the last bit of the video. And it's more about, you have to think about wh where is the arrow pointed towards. The arrow is not pointed towards traditional America. The arrow is pointed towards not hiring them. So again, if a new Hollywood movie comes out, oh, isn't this great that there are less white people in the cast of this comic book film? Maybe the new James Bond should be black. We talked about that for a whole year. Oh, you know, isn't it great if this new CEO is, a, is, is an Indian or, or a non-white person? Every, the arrow is pointed against white identity. It's pointed against white people defining America culturally and socially? Well, it was exemplified by an incident that happened, you know, when Donald Trump was having one of his rallies. Jeb, if you're watching, remember how you paid for that plane to fly overhead with a banner? And I think it says something like, Trump will raise your taxes, vote Jeb. I understand where you're coming from because like 20 years ago, that's the mainstream Republican thinking of you get voters by lower taxes, unlike the liberals, and because you believe in jobs and economic growth and GDP, that's how you look at everything. But the people at that Trump rally weren't there because Trump was promising lower taxes. They were there literally to try to maintain their survival, their survival as a people, as Americans. Because Trump was the first one to say that, yeah, he would build a wall to keep out illegal Mexicans. I don't know if that's enough to help, but at least it'd be something. And those people are so desperate to maintain their way of life, to maintain their families, the America they knew. It doesn't mean they hate Mexicans, but they don't want this country to turn into Mexico. Promoting and supporting massive migration from Mexico into the United States is one of these artificial phenomena. Even though migration between neighboring countries is historically natural, the rate and speed that we see today is unnatural and destructive for both nations. By having open borders, forced assimilation, free trade, global banking control, affirmative action, and the melting pot culture, the system is not helping us. The system is killing us Mexicans and they are killing white America too. This is probably the most important thing happening in the world today, because this is happening not just in the United States. Uh, if you look at Germany, it, when you see images of after the Syrian refugee crisis, just these waves of people coming in, you just see that this country is being radically transformed, that this, this, is, this transformation of societies and, 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 and cultures is the most important thing happening today. I mean, you could call it the great erasure. It is a radical transformation of the white world. And because this is happening, because we feel it, everyone feels it, that's why the alt-right is powerful, because it's so true. What we're saying rings true. What we're saying cuts right to the heart of the matter. And that's why people are attracted to us. That's why we're growing. Um, there's a college student, a college Republican, wrote this letter in response to an article on Ameri American conservative on the all right. It wasn't a very positive article. He says, I am in college and nearly all my conservative friends are at least sympathetic to the alt right. Even if they don't openly talk about it, they're, they're regularly browsing the right stuff. Radix, VDARE, Occidental Observer, and AMRAM. How did this come about? It's harder for older people to understand, but we younger uh, whites have been vilified all our lives. Throughout elementary school and high school, I, re I was regularly demonized as for being white. I attended public and Christian schools. It was even worse than the latter. And now it's even more extreme in college. Our entire white race is regularly trashed on a daily basis. We have the right to oppose our own dispossession and extinction, just as every other race does. 
it's time for younger whites to pick up the gauntlet because we're the future. Yeah. Yeah. We're mostly a young group. I'm older, but the people involved, they're very young and they're very excited because they understand their future's at stake and they, they understand their identity. And it's not taxes that they're concerned about. They're concerned about who they are. And that's, that's what really binds us together is, for example, I know Hungarians, they want Hungary to remain for the Hungarians, the Hungarian language, their culture, their customs, their people. It doesn't mean they hate other people or they're supremacists or they're Nazis. They just want to have their own identity. Can, can you understand that? And I think you guys can understand that when it comes to like Jews and Israel, right? You guys are right behind keeping Israel Jewish and you would be against any refugees coming in there because it would threaten Israel from being Jewish because the Jewish people have a right to homeland. I'm not against that. You know, I understand the position, but we have the same desire. We want our own homelands. We want to have our own people that are protected. That's really what we stand for. That's what binds us together on the alternative right. The truth is, the real help for us Mexicans, and this is talking to, for example, the white liberals, the real help would to actually enforce the natural cultural and ethnic borders that we have, to let both nations, even if in alliance, grow in sovereignty and in true freedom, creating an atmosphere of true, separate diversity with common areas in which neither side feels like the other one is stepping on the other. An atmosphere in which we can find hope, work, art, science, and growth in our respective capacities and understandings. Only in such ambience would we truly share values among identities and races. True cultural enrichment only happens when each culture has its own folk, territory, and independence. Diversity of the kind we're all supposed to be celebrating, whether it's uh, religious or racial or linguistic or cultural, all of that, they are sources of tension and conflict all around the world, wherever you look. People are slaughtering each other with great diligence because diverse people are trying to share the same territory. And for us to think that that's a strength of the United States, it's completely cuckoo. I guess traditional conservatives, when, when you talk about immigration, the big concern has been illegal immigration. But you're against legal immigration. Right. The illegal immigration is not really the problem. I mean, I support a crackdown. I support the wall. But at the end of the day, that is not the real issue. The real issue is the demographic change that's occurring through legal immigration. The notion that if you fill the United States with people as unlike each other as possible, that that is somehow going to produce a great nation, that's very dangerous. And it is particularly not just dangerous but unfortunate for whites, the people who built and established this nation. Whites are supposed to celebrate diversity. What does that mean? They're supposed to celebrate their dwindling numbers and their dwindling influence. It's not as though you can fill the country with Haitians and Guatemalans and turn them into the, the moral heirs of Thomas Jefferson and George Washington. It's simply not going to happen. We just have to say, this is not your country. You might very well be a wonderful person. You might very well have something to give to the world. But this is ours, and it's not yours. So we can respect you, but you're not going to come here. We are on completely opposite sides. On the contrary, I think really? in, a way, in a way, we are mirror images in that you are fighting for your people, I'm fighting for mine. Prominent Jewish writers like Jonathan Chait, David Brooks in the New York Times, Paul Krugman in the New York Times, have been very aware that, or made this claim exactly that Trump has been successful because of white identity politics. For Chait, Trump is a reincarnation of decades-old Jewish bogeyman in, Amer in American politics right-wing populism. He says, the party has grown increasingly reliant upon white identity politics to supply his votes, which has left an indelible imprint, not only in the Republican Party, its function, but also its form. For Brooks, Trump voters are, quote, just going with their gene pool. A rather bald statement that Trump voters are voting their racial interests. And then uh, Paul Krugman, he, describing Trump voters, he said, they were voting for blood and soil, patriarchy, and racial hierarchy. 
Okay. I'm going to decide what the alt-right means. And uh, I've decided that the alt-right simply means white nationalism and uh, that these people who want to say, well, I'm alt-right and I'm basically a libertarian. I'm a libertarian with nationalist tendencies. I'm sorry, you're not, you're a carpetbagger, you're a Johnny-come-lately, you're, you're not tall enough to, for this ride, you, you, need to, uh, you need to go back, all right? <laughs> You've got to go back to the mainstream and bide your time and maybe if you grow up a little uh, and, and approach us with a contrite heart, uh, we will admit you into our club. But what the alt-right is, is white nationalism and it's nothing else. And if it's hijacked or suborned by other groups, we're just going to pull a Howard Rourke on it. We're going to blow it all up. This is a white movement, Gavin. I know you say you're a Western chauvinist, but if you just made the little push by saying you're a white chauvinist. Do you think but, that um, black people could be part of a Western chauvinist movement? What about uh, Tlaib Starks? I think some Starks? of them could. I think that they're not a pro it's not a problem to have other ethnicities rooting for the Western movement. But I think at the core, we need to let people know that this is a white movement. This is about preserving the white race. And there's nothing wrong with the 14 words. Read those 14 words. We, we must secure. We, we, we must secure. The existence of our people. The existence of our people. And a future for white children. And a future for Western children. White. You talk about how your race, whites, may go extinct. But why does it matter? Your DNA will still exist in racially mixed descendants. What's so wrong with this kind of extinction? First, would you hold this attitude about a type of dog, or cat, or whale? Isn't it so bizarre that they never do? They talk about the disappearance of some subs subspecies as a tragedy. Yet when it comes to us, the human race, it's fine. Mix, mix, mix. It doesn't matter. If indeed America is a promised land for Jews, a large part of the credit must go to Jews themselves for, for using their power in the media and the educational system to campaign against nativism. After World War II, anti-Darwinian Jewish intellectuals became a dominant elite in American universities and in the media. Most noteworthy was the Frankfurt School's claim that ethnocentrism among whites was a psychiatric disorder. Ooh. I think we should say that, no, we are the real racists. <laughs> because we have to be honest about this. Everyone else is. I mean, it's very simple. I think it's time. I think it's time for honesty. I mean, really, it's nonsense that we're even at this stage at all. We should just be saying, I care about my own people. What's wrong with that? That's as simple as that. I think Peter Brimlow uh, is, is usually... Uh, given credit for this, that, you know, a racist is someone who's winning an argument with a liberal. I think there's, there's a lot of truth to that. Although, I would probably say that a, a racist is someone who's winning an argument with a conservative as well. If you want to know if two populations represent different subspecies, if, if there's enough differences between them to call them subspecies, what you do is you take a hundred of this population and a hundred of that population, you mix them together, and if you can resort them back into their correct uh, populations at about, the, at about 90% um, uh, accuracy than their subspecies. And is there anybody on Earth who could not sort these into their appropriate <laughs> populations? Or these? Okay, very clearly, the humans, uh, different human races have evolved to become uh, 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 different human uh, subspecies. And anybody who denies that uh, is either a slimy leftist Marxist or a complete idiot. Race is real, race matters, and race is the foundation of identity. Mixed race children and mixed race groups of adults lack identity and belonging. This makes them more susceptible to depression, suicide, self-destructive behaviors, and rootless cosmopolitan nihilism. Also, race mixing en masse leads to the extinction of a group, or even two groups, because they've mixed. Race is not a human, con uh, a social construct. Society is a racial construct. And uh, um, society and culture derive from uh, 
from race, from biology. It's all about biology. Only Europeans could be the first ones to go to space. Only Europeans could build something as magnificent as, as uh, uh, St. Paul's Cathedral or St. Peter's Cathedral. Only Europeans could engage in the kind of scientific discovery that we engage with, that, that will to kind of keep going, that will to follow reason to its very limit, even if it shatters everything you thought before. There's only Europeans have went through these tumults of reformations, of enlightenment, of you know, turning on ourselves. Only Europeans can be like this. What is it to be a British person? Is there a set of values or characteristics that makes somebody British? Civic nationalists would say yes, but they're wrong. Because you can't name these values. And anyone, every attempt to do so it just comes off as pathetic. It comes, it's delusional. How am I British? By holding which values or beliefs do I qualify as a Scottish person or a British person? There aren't any. There's drivel that my government pretends to believe in. There's drivel that I and other Scottish pe people are pressured to pretend to believe in. But all of this is nonsense. It doesn't matter what beliefs I hold. The reason I am British is that I am of that group. Genetically, ancestrally, historically, and culturally, and geogra geographically. I would love the British people even if they became communist. The traits and values they happen to believe in are not what makes them British. It is implicit, obscure, esoteric, nebulous. It is dreamlike and it is self-justifying. It is a thing in and of itself. It thrives on its own momentum and exists for as long as it chooses to. Okay guys, that's it. I'd previously written an extra 10 minutes of script on their ideology, but in the end I just thought it would be better to let the members of the alt-right explain their ideas themselves. It just felt like the most honest way to portray what the movement is really all about. I do want to say that this video is not an endorsement, it's just meant to be informative and hopefully entertaining, and I'll let you decide what you think of the alt-right. In the description box I've put loads of sources for anyone who wants to know more, and I've put links to counter-arguments there so you can get a more balanced view. Now I know people want to know what I think, so so, as you can tell, I'm sympathetic to much of what they are reacting to, but I do disagree with them on some pretty fundamental points, and I'm not a white nationalist. If you look in the comments section below, I've posted some of my thoughts there. So, thank you very much for watching. Well done on getting through it. And a big special thanks to my patrons. I love you guys. I love you so much. Yeah. I don't want to get the theory out here, but, you know, you're, you're the best. Thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs> Stand by the masses, stand by the crews, live and direct. Cool FM right about now, cool London representing. Highest degree, cool London family. CoolLondon.com. Let's do it again. Cool.